Shorts Raiders team. I'm here today to talk to you about R&D tax reliefs. Um, Shorts are we're, we're local accountants in Sheffield, so we're really keen to help uh, companies in the area claim their full entitlement to these generous tax reliefs. And that is one of the reasons why we partner with Sheffield Digital as well as the Sheffield uh, Chamber of Commerce. So the R&D tax relief. It's quite an old scheme now, introduced back in 2000, to incentivise companies to innovate using the tax system. Um, it's a scheme that's gained more popularity, but it's, it is still underclaimed. On the tax relief, it can be claimed by qualifying companies. So most SMEs will qualify, um, but you have to be an incorporated company, so not a, a sole trader or individual, and incurring qualifying expenditure. Um, it's on a qualifying project, and that's quite the, tr the trickiest condition to meet, which I'll talk about later. But the biggest barriers to claims we've found is that companies don't think they're innovative enough to qualify and underplay this. The two schemes available in the UK, the main scheme that we see is for the small medium enterprises, but there is a scheme for larger companies or SME companies who might be receive of um, grant funding. So qualifying projects aim to achieve an advance in science and technology through the resolution of scientific or technological uncertainties. These projects need to seek to create or at least appreciably improve a product or process or in technology companies um, software. There has to be an advance in all the science and technology and not just the companies. So companies trying to play catch up or copying what's available in open source is not going to qualify. But if there's a genuine advance um, where there's no known public um, information available, then there's a high chance it will qualify. Most sectors will qualify, but predominantly the manufacturing and technology sectors are the ones that submit most claims. The guidelines that um, we work to were put together by HMRC and the uh, Business Energy Industrial Strategy Department, which formerly was the Department of Trade and Industry. This triggers for R&D claims, and typically what we will look for is companies that have technical staff solving technical problems. Companies that hold a market leading position or have patents are a key indicator as well. Uh, technology companies, uh, amazing patents for software, um, is a bit more difficult uh, because of the way that software moves so quickly, but we have seen some companies that do hold software patents. Um, making modifications to processes also qualifies, um, and developing new products is, is, is actually a key area where it's, it, on these are often uh, evident. For software companies, particularly um, writing bespoke software, it is obviously where it's most likely to be R and D, and there we're looking for for how it's been done rather than what has been produced for the commercial project project. And it is um, often it can be brown coat development, just just not white coat people, white coats working in laboratories, for instance. But the big focus is on technical advance and resolving technical uncertainties. So how does it work in terms of relief? Well. This example will just talk through what it could be worth to a company who's making who making an R&D claim. So in this instance, a company spent £100,000 on staff wages and raw materials. The pay corporation tax at 19%, which is the current rate. The £100,000 they've already spent on, on those labour and materials costs would be expensed in their profit loss account as normal and showing the accounts. But what the R&D scheme does, it allows for an extra 130% deduction on top of that for the money spent on R&D. So in this instance, for £130,000, the £100,000 spent would give an overall deduction of £230,000. So the extra £130,000 that we've identified um, at 19% gives a tax saving of £24,700. Um, which is really a generous scheme, and if, if you think about it, um, you know, in terms of making a claim, it, that's an easy way to raise some cash for the money, and, and how many sales would you need to really generate to create that kind of money? Um, 100,000 is just a, a figure we, we, we've used, but obviously, and not quite often, companies might be not, might not be spending as much as that. 
a certain scheme is, is a really generous scheme. How to claim? Well, the claim has to be made on the corporation tax return alongside your tax computation and a set of accounts. Although it's not mandatory, an R&D technical report should be submitted as well, describing what the R&D projects were, how the advancing science and technology has been made or attempted to made, and the breakdown of the costs that you've incurred on each of the qualifying projects. You have two years from the end of the, your accounting period to make a claim. So if you had the 31st of March 2020 year end, you'd have until 31st of March 2022 to make that submission. In terms of the process of preparing claims, um, it should be straightforward and unburdening for the business if you're working with a specialist R&D advisor, such as ourselves. How we like to work is we normally have an initial discussion with the business, which lasts between 30 to 60 minutes. And here we can talk about uh, the projects that might qualify and what the process is. And if we're all happy that, there's a, that there are some R&D projects to uh, make a claim for, we'll then um, sort out with the engagement and hold a technical meeting uh, with the technical people. So that's normally the key competent professionals within the business. So that will be the, um, the, tech, the software developers who have been heavily involved in the project or, what, or the manager or maybe the director of the company. That meeting will probably last maybe one to two hours, but that really is probably going to be the main uh, part of the process for you. It will take most time, a couple of hours of time. They will then work and pull the report together into a technical document with all the uh, costs included, which is then shared back with the business to make sure it's all materially correct, you're happy with the claim. We then get that claim submitted to HMRC, uh, and then normally within 28 days, a claim is processed by HMRC, and the money's in your bank account. So a very streamlined process. And if you want to get in touch or talk about more, the contact details are there. We'll be happy to discuss how we can help you. Thank you.